let's look at creating variables with primitive data types. So what is a variable? Well, in this formula for a circle, a equals pi r squared, one of the variables is an r, which represents the radius of the circle. And the other is the area, the capital A, represents the area of the circle. So this is how we would use it in math class. So we can see that a variable is a piece of data that can change or be changed. In Java, we have to declare variables. So how do you declare a variable in Java? Well, you have to tell Java what type of data you're going to store in the variable, and then you have to give it a variable name. So this is the structure, a data type followed by a name. Data type means what kind of information can be stored in a variable. And Java offers several options. You can kind of think of data as numeric data and like all other data. So numeric data is going to be numbers and then all other data, there's a variety of types. Let's look at the main numeric data types. So data is not, numeric data is broken into two categories, integer types and floating point types. An integer is a number that's a whole number and its negative counterparts and zero. And a floating point number is any number that's a number with a decimal place. We would think of those as real numbers. So 3.14, 2.5, those are examples of floating point numbers. Under the integer type, there are four data types in Java that you can use for integers, byte, short, int, and long. And the two floating point types in Java are float and double. So in this chart, we see the numeric types that Java offers us. And you can see that they vary in range and the number of bits. Their range is dependent on the number of bits used to store the data. So for instance, a byte takes up eight bits. Well, what is a bit? A bit is a single digit that's either a zero or a one. So you can think of a byte as eight bits side by side. And then look at the range of the bit, of, of the byte. The byte goes from negative 128 to positive 127. And as you move down the list to short, you see that the number gets larger and larger is in terms of its range and it's and it doubles in size um, of the number of bits. So for integer types we generally use the int data type. Down below is the two floating point types float and double and they have really large ranges and generally we would use the double type anytime we have a decimal value. Here are some other data types that we have. A string is a bunch of characters. Um, they could be letters, numbers, symbols, uh, punctuation, and spaces. And a string is special. It's unique in that it's an object type or a reference types. And the other types that I'll talk about today are what we call primitive types. Next, you see a char, C-H-A-R. It's short for character, and you may hear some people pronounce it as a care short for character, I'll just call it a char. So a char represents a single character, but a character could be a letter, a number, a space, or some symbol. And Boolean is the equivalent of either true or false. It only has two states, true or false. So in this table, we see that a Boolean has either a low state of false, meaning it's turned off or zero, and a high state of true. And the character or the char has 16 bits, but really it could fit any number of characters that are in a language. String variables do not have limits or ranges, but they can store any character in the codex, and codex is just all the characters in the language. How do you declare a variable in Java? Well, here's three examples. So if we wanted to keep the age of somebody, we might say int age semicolon, where int is the data type and age is the name of the variable. The nice thing about programming is that variables can don't have to just be one letter like in math. Like in math class, it's like A or R or perhaps a Greek symbol, 
but in Java you can have multiple letters that make up a variable name. There are some rules about writing variable names. Uh, for instance, um, variable names have to begin with either a letter or an underscore. They can contain numbers as long as the number doesn't occur in the first character. And they can contain um, letters, numbers, underscore, or dollar sign. In the next example, we have string name. And the last example, we have double salary. OK, the variable is declared. How do you initialize it? Well, to initialize a variable means that you're assigning it its very first value. If you don't assign it a value, it has no value, and therefore it's not useful. So here's some examples. You can take age once it's been declared and assign it the value of 14. So we say age equals 14. Name equals Fred. Salary equals 21.75. Notice that all statements in Java are finished with a semicolon. Can't I save a little time and declare and initialize a variable at the same time? Well, yes. Yes, you can. So here's some examples of statements that are both declarations and initialization. So int age equals 14. String name equals Fred double salary equals 21.75. And this is typically how you will write your, your statements. The assignment operator. So that equals isn't saying that the two things are equivalent. What it's saying is I'm assigning the value on the right of the equal sign to the variable on the left of the equal sign. And this is how Java works all the time. Anytime you see an equals, you're assigning the value on the right to the variable on the left. And you can't switch the order of these two things. You can't put the number on the left side and the variable on the right side. That won't compile. Is it possible to declare and initialize multiple variables in the same statement? But of course. So on this line of code, you see int age equals 14, comma, grade equals 3, comma, room equals 113, semicolon. By separating each variable with a comma, you can declare and initialize more than one variable per statement. However, they must be the same data type. Notice that int appears at the very beginning of the statement. That means that age, grade, and room are going to be int type. You can't initialize multiple at the same time. Notice how age has its own equals 14 and grade has its own equals 3 and room has its own equals 113. They must be initialized separately, but they can be declared on the same line. Okay, variables versus literals. We've kind of described what a variable is, so let's review. A variable is a piece of data that has a label like height or age or name and it can be changed as often as needed based on processing requirements. On the other hand, literals, a literal is a piece of data that has a very specific value. For instance, if I write an 8, its value is 8. 8 is always equal to 8. 8 cannot change its value to something else. So it can't be changed. So this table shows you some examples. So for a numeric like int age, a literal that's an int would be 15 or 8 or 2. If you have a non-numeric like a string or a char, you can declare the variable that way, but then when it comes to the literal, a string literal is uh, some text with double quotation marks around it. As soon as you put the double quotation marks around it, it makes the, the, the letters inside of the quotation marks into a string literal. It literally means Bob. And for a boolean, a literal is both true and false. So got milk? True. You can literally type out T-R-U-E in the code to represent true. So how might you use a variable? Well, you can use it in an expression, such as ages, wages equals hours times 7.25, where hours is a variable that we're using in a multiplication. 
In the next example, we could save a value for later use. For instance, alarm equals eight. Now, now later in the code, anytime I use alarm, it'll equal eight. And you can also use it to manage loops, which will come later. Or for now, we can print variables. So if you have code int marbles equals 23, and then a print statement, system.out.println marbles, this is going to print 23. How can I print a variable and some text at the same time? Perhaps you want to create a sentence. So this is how you would do it. So int marbles equals 23, and then print and print line statements put together in such a way that it will build a sentence. So I have followed by marbles, marbles, the red thing is the marbles variable. Notice how this, the red marbles variable doesn't have quotation marks around it. Because it doesn't have quotation marks around it, Java interprets that marbles as a variable. On the, on the third print statement, we see marbles is in quotation marks and that marbles will be treated like a, a string literal followed by to play with. So on this slide, we see what would print. I have 23 marbles to play with. So therefore, a variable is a piece of data that can change or be changed. Variables are meant to be modified. That's their job. And in your code, you're going to be creating variables and changing their values constantly. So let's look at an example of trying to change a variable's value. Let's say we have int grade equals nine. On that line, grade is declared by putting the, the data type int in front of grade and initialized by setting it equal to nine. If we wanna change grade later to 10, um, we have some errors on this code because the programmer put int in front of grade when they're trying to assign it to 10. Well, the ints that are in red right there uh, should be erased because we don't want to declare it again. Anytime you put a data type in front of a variable, you're trying to declare it. Since grade has already been declared, this will cause a compile time error. Instead, we want it to look like this. Int grade equals nine, but later when we to want to change it to 10, we just write grade equals 10 or grade equals 11 or grade equals 12. Well, I hope you've learned how to use variables in Java. So get to programming.